Hey everybody, let's talk sure power versus an electrical extension cord. Hi, so this is going to be a little bit out of order and I apologize for that as far as maybe my descriptions, but bear with me. So I want to go over my short power versus electrical cord setup and <clears throat> there's definitely some uh, advantages to having the short power. Now, just the basics to let you know, my short power, which I'll go into more detail, is hooked in down through here, coming up through into a 30 amp pre-breaker into the main breaker system. And this, of course, is wired into the entire bus. Uh, prior to getting my uh, sure power setup hooked up, and I'll go over this in a little more detail, uh, I ran an extension cord from a building through the bus to one of those um, power strip outlets. And uh, I'll go into more detail on this in a bit, but just to give you a, kind of a demonstration uh, as best I can do. The cord ran from the outside, came up through, prior to this being here, up here, and I had my um, power strip right here. And it worked for the situation, but the problem was, since everything was plugged in here, I'd have one wire going up and over, down to this section, across, multiple wires here, and I was constantly tripping on stuff, uh, because I wasn't paying attention, and I did have probably more things plugged in than I needed to. However... Uh, now that I've got the sure power hook up, I'm going to go over that in uh, detail. And uh, it definitely offers me some advantages. Uh, the first being I don't have to worry, am I overloading the electrical cord, the extension cord that's coming from building out here. Alright, so let's go to the sure power. So we're going to go outside first. Alright, so this is my 30 amp connection here. Uh, I already had this cord, however, this is set up so that if I had the type that screws in and holds on, I could use that also. Now this is not plugged in at the moment. It has your basic three wire connection. And I apologize I don't have uh, some pictures of the inside of this. However, I'll give you a basic brief description. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Four screws and a gasket to hold it in place. Uh, I do have a video I think I've already posted which shows basically the drilling through. Uh, there's wires uh, these, not wires, sorry, there are three screws in here that hold the back unit in place. If the back unit comes off, you feed the equivalent of something similar to this through. There are three screws. You've got your power, you've got your ground, and your neutral or white, I believe. Now again, uh, I will tell you I'm not an electrician. I am not certified to do this. This is all on my own what I've learned. So if you have any questions, do your own research, find an electrician, if you have any questions, this is for entertainment only. Uh, so I got this connection inside, and uh, <clears throat> I should describe it a little bit more uh, inside when I get into it. So before I do that, let's just at least plug this back in. So this runs up to my system up here. So let me give you a little bit more explanation. System here. Uh, what I did was, let's get a little bit better view. Alright, so my 10 3 uh, 300 volt wire comes up into this pre breaker right here. And from that, this goes up into here, into this system. This is a six breaker outlet. Uh, from what I understand, and please verify this or, or check on your own. This is 110, set up as 110, but it's capable of 220 because there are two hot connections here. Now, in order for me to use all six of these, I had to bridge the connection from here to here because I only have one power wire coming into the system and then up over here. And then you can see I might got my um, grounds and neutrals going up top. Now, uh, if you're looking at this thing, oh, it looks nice and neat. Trust me, it's worth the time to do two things. To make this nice and neat, even though you might never see it, and have these cords as short as possible going into this system. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put power on, and I'm going to uh, show you the outlets that I have hooked up and why I did them the way that I did. All right, for this hook up here, what I don't have, uh, what is definitely recommended, there is a, a setup I guess you'd call it a pre-breaker setup, but it's a section about this long that plugs between this 
and the outlet. It has its own breaker setup. The reason I would recommend that I'm going to get one is uh, the one I have doesn't work. Uh, if you're ever out at a your own uh, a campground and you're not sure what their setup is, how their breaker system set up, this is going to give you some extra extra protection for your vehicle by going through that before this. So think of it as a, as a breaker in between you and your um, your vehicle. So I'm going to plug this in. And now we're going to go inside. All right, so here's the rest of my shore power connection inside. Uh, I've got the power hooked up and outside now, so uh, this actually is now on. This is my master switch right here. And I've got six outlets set up. So what I did on my 110 panel is the I do have 20 and 50 amp setups, meaning uh, on the... I ran out of outlets, so on the 15, 15 amp outlets, I made sure I had a 15 amp breaker. And for the 20 amp outlets, of course, a 20 amp breaker. So this is my list that I set up uh, for all my panel properly labeled. And so let's turn everything on. Now, lights may not come on right away. All right, now the first one I did, uh, I did a dedicated air conditioning. That one, uh, don't have the AC hooked up yet. Uh, I did do a second dedicated 20 amp line that goes underneath for a possible refrigerator uh, on that side if I was going to do a regular. So that's dedicated. Now this next one here is going to be for the passenger side outlets and I have one, two, three, four on this side. Passenger side outlets on that side. I've got one, two, three, four on that side. So driver's side outlet, I do have four on the driver's side outlet, so this is number four. Light comes on. You can see this a little bit better, I think, if I turn this around. So one through four are my 20 amp outlets. And uh, the difference in between the 15 and the 20 is, let me show you that really quick. All right, these are 15 amp outlets. As you can see, it has what you're used to, the standard, just the two. This just happens to have a USB connection. But my 20 amp outlets are signified by this side part here. I, I, I've never had any plugs that plug into that, but I know these are 20 amp, but it would tw tell you on the outlet itself. So the What I did... Again, I put one through four of my 20 amp breaker outlets. Now, my last uh, two outlets, actually, let's bring this over here. All right, so these last two here, this one is for the two backdoor outlets. Now, this is only 15 amp. I don't really plan on having a lot of things plugged into this. Uh, this is just for the event that I want to plug outside and run something. And number six... Uh, I was going to have some kind of charging station set up. Not that it uses a lot of power, um, but that is on its own 15 amp outlet. And I plan on having like my Ryobi or whatever I'm using for um, uh, extra weather charging up laptops if I want to use that dedicated. So let me uh, show you all the outlets that I have. So I'm going to start on uh, the driver's side here. So let's take the camera. Uh, again, these two are on one circuit on the back outlet. That's my dedicated charging station. I have one up under here. And also right here as well. Both of these are above the bed. I have this one here. Because this is where going to be my office, so I'll probably either have something plugged up there uh, or down underneath here. Uh, this is my bathroom section under here. Now there is an outlet under there which I could also potentially run a wire to my laptop if I cut a hole here, maybe like a grommet to protect it. But what that was going to be set up for is if I had some kind of vent drawing out air from the uh, bathroom section. Now on the passenger side, this is the dedicated AC outlet that I had told you about. 
I have my GFI here. This is the first one in line prior to this outlet here. This outlet here, and by the way, that is my uh, testing unit. You can see everything is normal on that. And then I have one outlet here by the door in case I want to run a wire outside. I opted not to do the 12 volt setup out here because I really don't plan on using this uh, that much. All right, so that is my Sure Power hookup. It's going to give me a lot of advantages now plugging things in, not having to worry about trip over cores. So I am not. A professional electrician. I have not been trained in setting things up in electrical. I do not do it professionally or for anybody else. I've watched videos. I've looked things up on the internet, followed diagrams. Uh, and speaking of that, it's extremely important to follow the diagram when you are hooking up your GFI because it does have to be set up in a specific uh, order when it comes into the system. So again, if you have any questions, Find an electrician, find someone you know who does this work, who's licensed, so that you don't have any questions uh, you know, or any concerns. So I hope you like this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you want to make sure you're not missing any videos, hit the bell icon. You'll receive notifications as each time I post. And also be sure to check out the description below the video. I will have additional links there as well.